We wrote it down before, maybe you didn't catch it. It's this long pair of fractions, okay? We should have y minus y1, x minus x1, and then the fraction on the right-hand side is actually very, very similar. Like that. There's your gradient, okay? What I want you to do now is I'm going to pause and let you have a go at this yourself. You've got all the information that needs to be substituted into here, okay? When you do that, it's going to be a bit of a schmozzle, okay? Lots of numbers flying everywhere. I want you to simplify it until you can get it into that form you mentioned before. Y equals mx plus b. Can you please do two things? Number one, substitute your numbers in. You're welcome to use a calculator because they're gross numbers. And once you substitute, rearrange until you get to this form. Okay, can you do that? I'll give you three or four minutes to have a go. So just to repeat, you're substituting the points into here and then you're rearranging everything so that it's in a nice form that's neat and we can graph it nice and easily. Okay, have a go. Let's have a look. Now, you tell me, does this check out, right? You can see right at the top, I've just quoted the two-point formula, and then I've noticed, okay, what my x1, y1 are, what my x2, y2 are, and I've just substituted in. Then, you can see a lot of the numbers simplify out, right? You've got um, the numerator and denominator on the right-hand side, they both simplify. Uh, you get a fraction that you can also simplify. And then you come to something like this. This is where I ended, okay? Who's got the answer? Yeah? Hands up? Yes? Okay, fantastic. Wait, so does, it, does it matter if you put it as a decimal? Yeah. I'll come to that in a second. Uh, the short answer is, at the moment, no. Yeah? I have it the other way around. Yeah, like, so instead of 180 minus 152, I have the other way. Ah, great. Okay, that's a, that's a good question. So, uh, and in fairness, I did do this before, and I think I did it in a different order. So, what's, what's happened, okay? What Ellen is talking about is, tell me if I've got this right, Ellen. She's written this, y minus 180 on x minus 26.5 yeah. equals 152, take 180. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, now, here's what's really... Yeah, I wrote that right. No. Here's what's really cool about this, and I pointed this out back when we did it, but I haven't looked at it since. The two-point formula takes an x1, y1, and an x2, y2. Does it matter which one is 1 and which one's 2? No. Answer no. You will still find an equation that goes through both of those points. And you can actually see your working should pan out to exactly the same thing, even if your numbers are all somewhat rearranged, okay? So the two-point formula, a bit like uh, the distance formula, the midpoint formula, you can switch things around and you still get the same result, which is kind of nice, okay? So, the reason why I put it here at the bottom as a decimal is just so that I can actually put this as a, a graph onto a piece of software that will graph this for me, okay? That's one of the reasons why uh, your graph looked different to mine, okay? So here is the data that I had graphed before. Uh, this is a piece of software called Desmos, and I think I've shown it once or twice before. Um, I didn't want you guys to see this first because it sort of takes out the legwork that you need to practice, but you're welcome for some of these later questions to have a go at it. There's all my data, you see that? All my heights and what was it? The radius? It's the, it's the bone length? Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to write in the equation. Can you help me remember? It's y equals 4... I think I wrote 4.66. That's the gradient. X. And then I think it was plus... Plus 56.33. Okay. So let me just colour that a bit better. There we go. Alright. So... We've actually looked at that, we've judged it based on our i, and then we've come out with this equation. And you can actually get software which will, as I've done, verify the fact that you've got an equation that really does fit the data well. Okay? So, you've got an equation now. Let me finish. I've asked you to do questions 1, 2, 4, and 6. We're like 90% through question 1. So let's finish it together. The rest of question 1 says, you've done part A and B. So we're going to do part C. Use your equation to find the height of a female whose radius is 25 centimeters long. Okay, let's have a look at your line of best fit. Okay, can you go to your graph, right? And I want you to find where you've put 25 on the horizontal axis. Why am I looking at the horizontal axis? 
look, what's your, what's your horizontal axis about? The radius. It's about the radius. And they say, imagine if you've got a woman who has a radius of 25 centimeters. So what I'm going to do, and I'd like you to do the same on your graph, is get your ruler out and go up from 25. Up onto your line of best fit. And you'll have a point up there. Right? Do you see that? Let me just highlight it a little more clearly. There it is. Once you've gone up to your line of best fit, where are you going to go from there? To the Across to the left. Because over there, what do you have on the vertical axis? That's the, that's the height you're trying to predict. Remember I said before, you're trying to use this information to predict things about people you don't know. Okay? Uh, what do you read that as? 173, 172-ish. I'm happy with either of those, because remember, this is a line of best fit that you've done by eye. Okay? Now, this is a really important bit. Can you just look up? This process that we've just done has a name. It's called, and I'd love you to write it down, it's called interpolation. What that means is you're making a prediction. You don't have, you don't have anyone who has a radius of 25 centimeters. You're just sort of guessing, predicting, estimating. It's called an interpolation because 25 centimeters is inside your data, right? When I say inside, I mean, look at the person with the smallest radius. Uh, what was this one's radius? 20, uh, 20.2 or something? Something like that. Okay, 20.4. What's the largest radius you've got? Look across. 26. 20, 26.2 20, no. or something, wasn't it? Yeah. 26.2. So the 25 is within that range. So interpolation is within your data's range. Okay, that's interpolation. But if you have a look at the last part of this question, it says if the radius is 27 centimeters, 27. So now come back to your graph. 27, whoops. My graph doesn't even go to 27. Do you notice that? Look, 27 is over here. And my graph doesn't go there. So your graph might be better than mine. So you're going to have to go up from 27 and you might need to extend your graph. That's what I'm going to need to do. I'm going to have to draw my graph a little bit further. Like that. What color haven't I used yet? Green. Uh, Green. Can you see that line? So what I've done is I've gone down to 27 over here on your right hand side, right? And you read up to the top and I guess we'd say that's something like 182. Depends on your graph, right? Now notice, please, Previously, we were interpolating. We were looking inside the data. 27 is not inside the data. It's outside. So we don't call this interpolating. We call this extrapolating. Have you heard that word before? Yeah. Extrapolating. So both of these things are predictions based on our line of best fit. And interpolation is inside your data, like this guy. And extrapolation is outside your data. Oh, that's a bit bright. Sorry, I didn't mean for that to be as, anyway, a bit fluid. Okay? So, what have we done? Let me review. Line of best fit. Draw your data. Once you've got your data, what do you do next? What's your second step? You're gonna need, you're gonna need this, right? And you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to sort of look and wave it around until you're happy. And then you're gonna draw. How do you know if you're happy? What criteria do you use? You wanna try and hit lots of points? And then above and below, you roughly want the same, roughly. Okay. Once you've drawn it, then what do you do? Look at my blue things. What, are, what do I do with that? You're looking for two points that are on your line. Yeah. It's a long process, but that's because statistical understanding is really tricky to pick up. Wait, wait, wait. Before I answer your question, once you've got your two points, what do you do with those two points? Interpolation. No, no, no. What do you do with your two points? You're going to need to find the equation of that line, right? And then you'll often get asked that question, okay? And then lastly, you can use your line of best fit to make predictions about things that you don't otherwise have measurements for, okay?
Yeah. You had a question, Reef. If it's in the test, then will we get extra time? Because it takes so long. If you, if this is in a test, then this is obviously a time-consuming process. Um, you would either have, for example, you'd have data provided to you, like you'd have a scatter plot, and then we'd say, okay, now off you go, do this part, right? Or alternatively, we'd say, make the scatter plot. You draw the line, but then we won't ask you anything further because it, it, it takes time, doesn't it? Okay. But this is a really important statistical skill.